The world of classic car conversions is growing and growing with a number of cool and quirky cars making the switch over to electric. You might have seen a few examples of this already on our channel with the Porsche 911 964 Coupe and the VW Mark II Golf. And whilst most of the companies specialising in these conversions are often small and independent, we've got up especially early on a Friday morning to travel all the way across to Wales to come and see a few faces you might just recognise. We're here in Newtown to see electric classic cars, the guys behind the show Vintage Voltage. With the new series having just launched on Quest, we thought it was the perfect time to come and see them and to get a sneak peek of what goes on behind the scenes. I'm here to meet Richard Moggy Morgan, the face of Vintage Voltage and Electric Classic Cars. Despite being busy fiddling about with a number of iconic cars that are making the switch over to electric, Moggy was able to put his tools down for a second and give us a quick tour of the workshop. So in here we've got um, uh, cars that are finished and um, just on, uh, starting their journey. So we've got a Gordon Keeble there that's finished, we're just waiting on some custom rear shock absorbers, a couple of Ferrari Testarossas, still got the dirty smelly stuff in and a BMW CSi here, which looks like a CSL. Um, that's finished. But again, we're just waiting on a brake upgrade for that because this is so powerful, it's got a Tesla drive unit in. So we're gonna upgrade the brakes. Um, we're just waiting for that to arrive from Willwood. Um, so yeah, everything along here is either finished, converted or mid-build. Um, the Alfa Romeo's just uh, got a direct drive unit going in. So that's essentially just driving the rear axle without a gearbox. So that's uh, around here somewhere, about to go in. This is a car that's just starting its journey. So we've taken out the engine. Um, the motor that's going in it is just around here. So there's the motor and the adapter plate and that will attach onto there. But before we do that, we're just making sure the engine bay is nice and tidy and giving it a bit of lick of paint really. Um, so yeah, there's uh, Porsche 914. That's a right-hand drive conversion, quite rare. Uh, that's uh, now a, a 914E. So that was a new badge we made. Yeah, I've noticed some of the, I saw the, the Volkswagen one as yeah, well, and uh, the Land Rover one, which I spoke to you earlier about as well, they're pretty cool. So, little, little touches like that, yeah. I like that. So obviously this, the workshop's pretty full at the minute, so how many projects really, roughly, it's probably hard to say, but through a year would you, would you get through from, from well, start we, to finish? We've got about 16 cars in the workshop um, at any, any one time, and I think we've converted about 70 cars now, okay. um, total. Uh, we're ramping up again this year, so expanding again this year to meet the demand. We've got about um, 68 cars in the order book. So what we've got to try and do is like just expand the workshop that way, get a few more lads in and uh, just get, get uh, increase the throughput. Yeah, so. I saw as well on your, I think it was with Octopus, you did the, the conversion in one day. And I know yeah. that's sort of like one extreme, <coughs> but typically from start to finish, how long would one of these projects take? So I know it would probably depend on the car as well, but yeah, I mean, on, on sort of average. Well, the BMW CSI over there, that BMW E9, that's been with us about two years. Oh, wow, so that okay. had to go through restoration. It came in as a bit of a basket case. So that's one extreme. And the other extreme, as you've already pointed out, is that converting it in a day. But on average, it's around about a three month process. Okay. It depends if we've got a kit already designed for it, like a Fiat 500, we've already got a kit designed for it. But if we're doing something like this Maserati Ghibli, well, I can guarantee you nobody's converted with them ever. So we've got to think through the process as to where we can put batteries, motors, etc. So that's a long process. Yeah, and are these all sort of donor cars from from customers or how, how do you go about getting each, each model to either restore and then convert? Customers uh, bring us their cars. Okay. So what we don't do is we don't convert a car and then try to sell it. Uh, customers bring us their cars, um, either pre-restored like this, or um, like the um, BMW came in, a bit of a you know wreck. In fact, there's a, a Mercedes over there. It's um, uh, just gone through restoration. Uh, so we then bring it up to spec, convert it to electric, and then hand them the keys. So it's kind of a, a service rather than the product that we create. And you said you want to expand, obviously, that way and get a few more guys in. How, how big is the size of the business now in terms of staff? And We've got 15 staff at the moment, and uh, we're going to double uh, the workshop area that way. Um, 
and probably double the amount of staff ready probably uh, in about the next um, six, six months. Although the company is flying high now with a second season of Vintage Voltage having just been released, the history of electric classic cars is relatively short. So I sat down with Moggy to find out all about the journey of the company and what the future has in store. It started as like a hobby in my shed at home about seven years ago, I converted my first car and now it's become a hobby that's got out of control as my wife likes to call it and we are what 15 staff here now and a two year waiting list and uh, shipping cars all over the world really from Australia to um, California and Europe, UK, everywhere really. Yeah and I understand you used to be like like most of us really used to be in, like an old school petrol head. Oh and, big time. And yeah. uh, you're big into your rallying as well so what, when was it and what was it that initially attracted you to electric cars and what was it that got you into convert, wanting to convert them over to electric? Power. <laughs> lots and lots of power. And talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, uh, I, I finished doing the rallying um, uh, after doing it for about seven years and then my hands were itchy in the workshop and wanted to build a new engine. So uh, I looked around as to what to build. I thought, like, shall I do a supercharged, turboed engine? And I'd done them all before. And I came across a, a motor um, conversion in the States on YouTube. I thought, yeah, let's do that. I've not done that before. And as soon as I put my foot down the very first time and felt that instant power, it was like, yeah, okay, that's it. Electric's where it's at for me. So yeah, and we've walked through the workshop now. You've shown us some of the cars we've got in now, but out of all of the ones that you've worked on over time, what, what are some of the ones that stand out as, as your favorites? Oh, uh, so we've done about 70 cars now. And the ones that stand out for me, um, we did a Ferrari 308 a number of years ago. That was really special, um, a special car, but also it then handled and accelerated like the Ferrari, 8, uh, Ferrari 308 looks because Ferrari 308 is not the most powerful Ferrari and uh, handling was a bit rubbish as well. But after we converted it using Tesla drivetrain, that thing flew. Uh, another one uh, stands out for me is the DeLorean. Uh, that was pretty rubbish engine when it came in and uh, when it went out again Tesla drivetrain drove like a modern Tesla Model 3 but looked like a DeLorean and uh, like who wouldn't want that and I suppose to top it off um, the Mini is probably another one we did a Mini um, uh, recently and that was 300 horsepower in a little Mini but we managed to keep uh, all the luggage space and put everything in like you know uh, areas of the car which didn't impact uh, on the um, you know passenger um, uh, sort of things uh, the space was still the same and but it went like a rocket so I enjoyed that one yeah so I suppose as much as it is about keeping these classic cars and bringing them into the 21st century in the case of the DeLorean like you said it's all about it's also about reimagining them and giving them a new lease of life and a new personality yeah, yeah exactly so I mean uh, the, the reasons why people convert uh, the cars or the reason why they get us to convert the cars for them are quite varied it's everything from environmental reasons to I want to enjoy my car uh, every day but it, the reliability is not quite there um, and I, you know I'm getting on a bit I don't, don't want to have to do all the maintenance all the time and you know uh, there's quite a few of the younger generation like yourselves that you know they don't know what a Haynes manual is for instance and they wouldn't have the first clue how to you know, change the oil or maintain um, a, a classic vehicle, but they still would like a classic vehicle, but not with all the baggage that it brings. So we get quite a few clients like that that are wanting a classic car, but with modern reliability, if you like. So yeah, it, it reminds me. We did a podcast not too long ago with uh, Ian Callum, who oh, I'm, no, yeah. I'm sure you know. Yeah, yeah. he's a fan of uh, what we do. He's a good guy. Yeah, and uh, one of his big things is when he was designing the iPace, he thought electric cars are too conventional looking and a bit too boring is that and obviously so now you have a whole catalogue of classic designs but you can now convert over to electric and they're fit for the for the 21st century exactly i mean click modern cars are a little bit jelly moldish to me they they don't really you know have much character in their design anymore and there's a number of reasons behind that you know safety factors passenger safety but also pedestrian safety and stuff like that so there's reasoning behind why the designs have become a bit sterile and a bit boring over the years um, but that means that the classic cars are, you know from they're very attractive from an aesthetics point of view just not from the reliability and maintenance and, and cost of keeping it on the road uh, point of view so if you marry a 21st century drivetrain to something that looks stunning and classy 
then that to me is the ultimate car. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I started, because way back when um, I was looking for uh, a new car um, for my wife, and we went to test drive a Nissan Leaf and like, you know, BMW's electric offering and, you know, Renault Zoe's and they didn't, uh, I don't know, they, they, they didn't really talk to me as a car. I mean, they were just a bit boring. It's probably the, 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 the simplest way to put it. Um, and then I thought, well, why are we doing this? Why don't I just take one of my VW Beetles at home, convert that to electric and you can have that. And that's what we did. Yeah. And now, You've shown us all the, the models that you're working on. You said you've worked over, um, was it 70 models? 70 from... cars we finished now, yeah. Are there, are there any models out there which you haven't worked on yet, which, which you think would just make a perfect electric, electric car well, that you're dying well, to work on? Yeah, I, I love to convert cars that were flawed um, um, because of their engine uh, or because of something that we can improve when we convert it to electric. So okay. a DeLorean's a perfect example. Fantastic car, concept was brilliant. A little bit flawed by the fact that the engine was a bit pants. Um, now, one car we haven't converted yet, which definitely um, it can be improved with being electric, I think, is the Lamborghini Countach. Okay. Because to me, um, great engine, you know, don't get me wrong, it's not like the DeLorean flawed because of the engine, it's got a fantastic engine, but everything else is just rubbish. The, the driving position is awful. You've got this huge transmission tunnel here um, taking up most of the space in the cabin. If you're over about six foot, you can't get in the damn things. The clutch is really heavy. Handling's awful because all the weight is behind you. So that's one of the cars I think can be vastly improved by converting it to electric. As we've said, you're an old school petrol head that's made the switch over to electric. So what would you say to someone who is a, is a big petrol diesel car lover, but is perhaps a bit skeptical of the electric revolution? Um, I would say don't listen to people with an opinion, listen to people with experience. People that have driven and own electric cars, talk to them, get the pros and cons of what they think about it. Don't listen to the average man down the pub that doesn't have an electric car but has you know, a very you know, negative opinion about electric cars for whatever reason. So that's the first thing I'd say is talk to people with experience of electric cars, not people that have an opinion on electric cars. And then secondly, go out and try one. Simple, just go out and try one and uh, you know, maybe uh, borrow it for the weekend if you can from a showroom or whatever, but just simply go out and try them. And uh, I mean, I was the biggest petrol head out there. I mean, I did um, historic racing, I've uh, done hot rods and custom cars all my life and you know, the sound of Delorto carbs on full chat in a, in a Porsche for instance is fantastic. But you know, if I can be converted to electric, anybody can. That's all for this video. A massive thank you to Electric Classic Cars for letting us come down today and be sure to check out the latest series of Vintage Voltage on Quest. You can also check out all our other videos by heading over to our channel and for daily news coverage features and much more, you can also head over to evpowered.co.uk. Thanks once again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.